Welcome back to another Construct video and this is part of my new series where I take a popular mechanic from a game and I try and recreate it in Construct providing a tutorial at the same time. This week I thought I'd have a go at Minecraft's terrain generation so much bigger than the normal stuff I normally cover on here uh, but I thought a really interesting one and how can we generate that terrain. Now obviously Minecraft's a 3D game and Construct does support 3D but as you'll see from this 3D example that I've set up inside of Construct, while we have got terrain generation, we've also got a tremendous amount of lag and we're only actually spawning quite a small block at the moment. So even if I optimise this with chunks, it's still very, very slow. So Construct's not very optimised for 3D. So instead, we're going to go for a more of a terraria route and go for a 2D concept as well. So load up Construct and let's get started. So once we load up, the first thing we need to do is actually create a player. So I'm going to insert a new object, scroll down to sprite, and create the player. Now for mine, I'm just going to use my normal avatar that I normally use when I make these tutorials. The most important thing is that we're going to resize it to 16 by 16, because that's what we're going to be working in for block sizes. So we want our character to fall into the same rules. Once it's done, we can then just go and add our two behaviors to it. So the first one's gonna be scroll to, so the camera follows our player. And the second object we're going to add to it, or behavior we're gonna to add to it, is going to be a platform behavior. So it behaves like a platform character. Now we can start creating our different block types. So I'm just gonna move my player out the way to the top of the screen. And we're gonna insert some new objects. So first one we're going to do is we're going to take the grass block, Pick anywhere, I'm going to resize it to 16 by 16. And I'm just going to take flat color of green and just apply it. Once I've got my grass block, I'm just going to move it to the top where our player is, just so it's off the screen. And then I need to do the same for the following blocks. So I need a stone block, and then I need some ores. I'm going to create three ores, a diamond, a gold, and an iron. So I'm going to time lapse through this really, really quickly for you. Now once we've got all those blocks in place, we're just going to go through one at a time and just add the solid behavior to them. And now we're all set up to actually start creating our game. So last thing I want to do very quickly is just click on the layer. And we're just going to change the background color to a light blue. This will just be our sky color. So let me find one that I like. Go for that and apply it to our background. Now the rest is going to happen inside our event sheet. So first we can grab the advanced random object. So just click on the objects folder. Scroll down until you find the advanced random. This can be really, really important for what we need to do today. So first we're going to add a new line of code and we're going to say on start of layout. So this is going to work as soon as the game loads. And then what we're going to do is go to advanced random and set octaves to one. Next, and we're going to have a lot of this is we're going to add what's called a blank sub event. This gives us a gap underneath that we're able to run code and this code will run only if this condition is met. So on the start of layout, this code will also run as long as the condition is met. So we're going to start by creating some variables. So the first variable that we need is one called density. Okay, and I'll explain what this is used for when we get to it. The second one that we're going to need today is called value. And again, once we're there, I'll explain what's going on with that. Then or. And finally, a value for y. With that set up, we're ready to move to our next condition. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to system. Scroll down to repeat. And we're going to repeat for the layout heights divided by 16. 16 being the size of each one of our blocks. If your block size is different, obviously, you just need to change this bit here. And then click done. 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our system and we're going to set a value and we want to set the value of y equal to the loop index. So how far through this loop are we? This is allowing us to place a block in every single position. We're also going to apply the density here. So we're going to set value of the density and this can be set to max. And then we're going to take y plus 20 comma zero and divide by 60. So with that in place, we're now able to add another subcondition. So add a blank sub event and then double click on it. And this is going to be another repeat. And now we can place a block on every single spot across the X direction. We also want to be able to go into the Y direction as well. So we can cover every single space. So now we repeat. And this time we're doing it for the layout width. Sorry, so we've done the height. Now we're doing the width. And again, this is divided by 16 for our block height. And now we can take our advanced random for the first time. But we're going to actually do this using the set value. I'm going to use this value here that we created. And this is going to be advanced random classic 2D. Then inside the brackets, we're going to put y and the loop index, loop index being that second loop we're creating at the moment. We're going to times this by our density and hit done. Now this value is going to be really important because this is going to allow us to check how high up in the sky we are. And from that, we can choose to place air, grass, stone, and so on. So with that done, we can now add another sub events. Again, we're going to have lots of these sub events going in today because we want this to happen every single loop once I built these loops. So first we're going to check what this value equals. So we're going to compare two values or compare value or variable we can do actually. And we can say if this value is actually greater than 0.5. This gives us a value between zero and one. And we want to check if that's above 0 0.5. This actually checks the bottom of our screen. So we can check for stone. So really, really useful. And if not, we can do some other stuff on top of this used to create stuff like um, grass. OK, so we'll look at that in just a bit. First of all, we need to add a new sub event. And this is going to take use of our advanced random again. So we're going to say system. Pair two variables, and we're going to say if advanced random times cellular 2D. And again, it's going to be our Y and our loop index inside the two brackets today. So greater than 0 0.55 here. And then press done. Now, this number here is deciding if we want to place ore or not. So if it's greater than 0 0.55, we're going to place ore over stone. If we want to have more stone than ores, we just up this value. Okay, so really, really useful and easy to implement there. I'm going to add another sub event underneath here, and this is as low as we're going for our sub events. And now we can check which ore we want to place. So what we're going to do first of all is before we do that blank sub condition, I've just missed a step, is we just need to actually work out what ore we're going to place first. And do this, all we're going to do is we're going to use system. We're going to go back to set value. Or it's going to be really similar to what we've just done before. So we're using the advanced random again. So cellular 2D and then X and then loop index. We're just storing that value inside the or. Oh, sorry, Y is going to do the X. There we go. Now with that in place, what we can do is we can check what all we want to place. So we can say compare variable and we can say or is greater than 0.95. And what we want to do is we want to take our system, create object, and we can create my or one, which is to replicate my, my diamond or if you'd like. And then this is going to be set to the loop index times 16 because again 
we're working with 16 size blocks. This is going to be set to Y times 16. This is going to place a diamond block. Now the 0 0.95 means there's a 5% chance that we'll spawn a diamond block. Okay, so if you want to make it less common or more common, we just change that value there. I'm going to add an else. This means if we're not placing a diamond block, what we're going to do instead. And we want to place more than just a second block. So what we want to do is add another condition to this. And that other condition is going to be system compare variable. I'm going to check if or is greater than 0.8. So this means now that we've got a 15% chance going from 0 0.8 to 0 0.95. That's our difference. So 15% chance of another ore spawning. And for me, that's going to be a gold ore. So I'm just going to take this condition that I had, paste it in. And just simply change it from a diamond to a gold ore. I'm going to do one more. So I'm going to add, add an else. I'm not going to add another check for ore because I'm just going to say that any more ores we're going to place are going to be my equivalent of an iron ore. And again, I can just copy and paste this for ease and just change this to iron. Now, again, this bit here is just checking if this value is above 0.65. So giving us a 35% chance of ore spawning over stone. So all of this is just controlling ores only. We want to take this condition, add an else to this. This will add an else statement underneath. And now what we can do is actually copy and paste our create object and make this stone. So stone is going to fill the rest of it like so. So now what we've got set up is we're able to sort our different ores, diamond, gold, and iron, and we're able to create stone as well. What we haven't done yet is actually looking at creating grass or anything like grass yet. So to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to take this statement here, add a new else statement below, and then we're also going to add another condition, system, compare variable. I'm gonna say if value, is greater than 0.47 and then what we want to do is create our grass block now what this is doing is this gives us a three percent chance of grass spawning and because the value is based off height levels it means that once we finished all our stone we'll place some grass and then anything after that which is going to be a huge amount after is just going to be a chance for air to spawn it instead which is why we're leaving that blank. So now we're ready to do our very, very first test of this. And let's see if it's working. So our cube spawns in, and you'll see that we've got a level that's somewhat randomly generated. Now this level itself is really, really small. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of changes to this. So first thing we're going to do is actually up these numbers. This will give us much better generation than what we've got at the moment. Will look much better. So let's do six uh, six thousand by three thousand. Much bigger of a level. Also, what we're going to do is we're going to go to project properties. <clears throat> we're going to take our viewport size. We're just going to halve both those numbers. So we're looking at a bit of mass here. Four four eight two five six. I've got it saved already. Let's run this again. And now you'll see that I'm able to move around my level. You see there's drops as well. So it's not like it's completely flat. And then every so often I should get some random ore spawning inside my stone. So there you go. There's a big iron vein that I've got there. It will spawn in veins thanks to our advanced random. And we can move around the level. There's some gold now as well. And then we reach the end of the level. We can fly through to see all these different ores spawning. So really, really simple bit of code once you get your head around it. Last thing I want to show you with this is how to set up a seat. So with computers, computers work off pseudo random numbers, not actual random numbers. So what we can actually do is we can take the seed that it's normally provided by something like the clock, which is always changing, or we can give it our own seed. So now we can make it so the same level spawns every single time. And to do this, we just go to Advanced Random, 
update seed. And inside here, we can put the word hello, hi, whatever you want in here, put whatever you want in here. And as long as you've got something inside this box, it will give you the same seed every single time. So we can test this by writing hello, run our code, and we'll drop down. We'll see we go to a flat bit and all the way falling down, there's some iron and a curve at the bottom. As long as I keep this at hello, I'll get the exact same thing happening. So again, exactly the same, and then that iron curve at the bottom. So seeds are really, really useful. If you don't want it to have a seed and you want it to be random, just delete this, and that will solve that problem there. And the final thing I want to mention today is that this tutorial would not be possible without this procedural terrain generation example that's on the Construct Free website. This helped me quite a lot understanding how this all works. So they've got the full code here. The code is in far more depth and starts dealing with chunks and world saving and how to scroll the world properly. So hopefully this video today gives you an understanding of how to look and understand their code. Um, if not, just something fun that you've learned today and been able to play around with. If you've enjoyed, please like and leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.